We've gotten used to seeing Bono or Angelina Jolie globe-trotting on humanitarian trips, but 50 Cent? Turns out the lewd and crude rapper has been doing a lot of good in support of the World Food Program. So they invited him to a refugee camp in Somalia, arguably the most lawless country in the world, with terrorists, pirates, and now a terrible drought and famine. But can being a do-gooder cramp his bad boy style? Here's ABC's Dan Harris. Go show. It's 50 Cent, a.k.a. Curtis Jackson, is best known for rapping about bedding women, drinking champagne, and getting shot nine times as dramatized in the movie Get Rich or Die Tryin', which charts his rise from crack dealer to number two on the Forbes list of richest black entertainers. So what is this man doing at this security briefing? This is very tense situation. About to head into a place even more dangerous than where he came from, Somalia, on a humanitarian mission. Kidnapping has been the threat number one. After our security briefing, 50 claimed not to be nervous at all. According to the briefing, it's pretty dangerous, but we don't get briefings in the environment that I come from, and it can be pretty dangerous there also. We were flying in with the United Nations World Food Program. All right, let's do this. To which 50 Cent has recently become a large and very unlikely donor. He just launched a new line of energy drinks called Street King. Oh, God. Ten cents of every bottle sold will go toward feeding children all over the world. I want to feed a billion hungry people. Let's do this. He's already provided more than 3.5 million meals, but this would be the first time he would actually go to a refugee camp where that desperately needed money is being used to save people. And as we flew in, it became clear that this was a bad boy rapper with an identity crisis. I want to make more, not just as an artist, but as a person, to my legacy, like what's left behind. I don't want to be a guy that's just remembered for uh, writing a few cool songs. You've got a lot of money, so it seems to me you're, you're, you're thinking to yourself, how do I make my life meaningful? Right. Exactly that. We landed and were quickly loaded into a convoy led by a truck filled with armed men. Somalia is a land of al-Qaeda, piracy, and famine. All you need is 30 seconds on the ground here to see how inhospitable this terrain is to any sort of life. We arrived at a refugee camp filled with women and children, many of whom had walked for weeks to escape the drought and war. As he watched frail arms measured to see the extent of their malnourishment, this rapper who sold drugs at age 12 on the mean streets of South Jamaica, Queens, who never knew his father and whose mother, also a drug dealer, was murdered when he was just a child, was at an utter loss for words. What's the impression it makes on you? I've never seen anything like this before. It struck me as I watched 50 Cent peer into a makeshift hut and interact with school children who only get one meal a day that this man, whose lyrics are so sexist and violent that the UN initially didn't want to take his money, is in real life very different than his public image. This house is crazy. I had interviewed 50 once before, so I knew that he never drank or smoked, that he meditated with Deepak Chopra, owned a four-pound dog named Oprah that he liked to dress up, and that he rattled around all by himself in a mansion in Connecticut. Do you work all the time? Pretty much. What about your personal life? I really don't have very much. But even if his bad boy baller image seemed like a little bit of a front, <laughs> he freely admits that images of him on this do-gooder mission could further alienate his core audience. You know, so many of your song lyrics are about being strong, being tough, that it's a cold world. Yeah. How does that jive with what you're doing here for these kids? Well, it doesn't match at all. I mean, this is like the next chapter of my life. I don't care if my audience is prepared to move forward with me. They may not necessarily be growing at the same pace. It is a tricky transition, truly uncharted territory, a first step toward being what his manager called the hip-hop Bono. To get a sense of how tricky, 
look what happened when we visited a school where the kids knew 50s music very well. Are you guys fans of 50 Cent? Yeah. Yeah. But they couldn't get him to sing with them. It was an uncomfortable moment. Sing one song. I can't sing the song. Do not sing any. I don't want to sing the song. Afraid. You see, they all looking at me. Ah, you just sing. sing. <laughs> Uh, one time you're putting all this pressure on me. I can't sing the song now. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Why didn't you want to sing? For one, I mean, I, a lot of the material that I, I make, nothing is, uh, didn't feel appropriate for that setting. Because if you sang in the club, about six words in, there's an F-bomb. Right, right, boom, boom. <laughs> it's going to land hard out here. But it struck me when I was watching it that despite all the things you do, you are a little shy. I am. The education of 50 Cent, the battle for this rapper's soul, is a fascinating spectacle to behold. By the way, he did end up singing a little bit with those kids. Go shawty, it's your birthday. We go party like this is your birthday. And they loved it. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in Somalia.